your life. Hello and welcome to Chi Coaching Week. Whether you're a healthcare professional or you're health conscious, this is the place to be because this next week for the next five days, we're going to share with you some simple practices in order to help you improve your health and your overall well-being to achieve ultimate health and live the life that you're supposed to be or you're supposed to live. Hello, my name is Chris Shelton. And I'm Parisa Shelton. And for over 50 years combined experience, we've been helping people from around the world achieve this greatness that everybody, most people want to achieve. And when we talk about greatness, we're talking about our ultimate health. That means our physical, physical, mental, emotional health and our spiritual health. All three of those are equally as important. And financial health. Financial health. And career health. And relationship health. Yeah, yes. relationship health. Yeah, exactly. All equally important. So that's what we're going to be discussing here on Chi Coaching Week. So this is the first of a, a series, like I said in the opening here, of the net, for the next five days of these uh, live videos talking about things that can help to improve your life. And the ultimate, ultimate thing for us is practicing the art of Qigong. And, and being a practitioner and clinical practice, also seeing patients for over uh, 23 years now, you know, I've seen all kinds of people with all types of disorders. And the leading cause of death and disease, we'll get into this later on in the week, but I'm just gonna to touch on it right now, but leading cause of death and disease is actually emotional trauma. And how can we help to empower you to work through the day-to-day -day trauma, but also the past trauma. To help reverse it, right? Help to reverse it, yeah. Yeah, because you've seen all kinds of conditions, like really far down diseases reverse itself. Is that true? That's true, that's true. And you know, back in the day in China, you know, and by the way, Qigong is a 5,000 year old practice, but back in the day in China, what happened was, was that you actually paid your physician in order to help you stay healthy. You stopped paying your physician once you got sick. So, you know, that's mm, that's the model which wow. to live by. That's like true health care, don't you think? True health care, yeah. Because nowadays, what do we do? We pay our doctor when we're sick. Yes. Mm. All right, well, we're going to talk about that also later on this wow. week. Yeah, we're so, going to talk about that. Mm. And Qigong is literally said to be the art that prevents disease and prolongs life. So and preserves health. Yeah, preserves, preserves health. health so. so when we're looking for uh, this longevity, this fountain of youth, you know, here in Los Angeles, we surrounded by all kinds of uh, beautiful people. And mm -hmm. really the beauty comes from inside. So, you know, it's not going and having uh, surgeries, plastic surgery or <laughs> implants or whatever put into your face to make you look younger. If you mm -hmm. want to look younger, you have to pay attention to what's going on inside of you, you know, because uh, they actually say that uh, there's an old textbook, uh, that clinical textbook, and this clinical textbook actually would talk about, this uh, clinical textbook actually, what's that? I thought TikTok was live, but keep going, <laughs> the clinical textbook. Okay, so this uh, clinical textbook, also called the Yellow Emperor's Classic of Chinese Medicine, actually talked about how, um, how disease sets in, and they say that the superior doctor is one that can prevent disease before disease sets in. Mm -hmm. So the whole idea of Qigong is for you to empower you to become your own superior doctor. What does that mean? That means that you learn the practices, you learn the symptoms and the signs, we're gonna talk about that also later on this week, that show that disease is setting in. Or if disease has set in, how can you actually re reverse it? Wow, that's so cool and empowering and life affirming. Life affirming, yeah. So how did you get started? <clears throat> how did I get started? So <clears throat> the, my old story or the old story of the ego self was that, um, <laughs> You know, I grew up in a dysfunctional home and there's a lot of neglect, uh, abuse, mostly verbal abuse, but sometimes physical abuse and uh, a lot of violence inside the home, a lot of fighting and those kinds of things. Anyways, uh, I started doing drugs at age 12. Wow. And, uh, 12. Speed, 12. Speedballs, heroin and coke. I wasn't shooting it, but I was snorting it. Yikes. And uh, finally, by the time of about age 18, my senior year in high school, mm -hmm. I had my uh, first heart attack. And um, and as I overheard a teenager. as a teenager. Are you going to tell us how old you are today? Not yet. <laughs> okay, keep going. That's a trivia question for later. <laughs> yeah. You can put that in the chat below. How old do you Guess think? Guess how is? old Mr. Chris is. So, and anyways, Ms. what's that? <laughs> and Miss Pete. And Miss Pete. Okay, so anyways, so I had this first heart attack, and I overheard the doctor when I was in the ER uh, talking to my father, who's there outside the curtain, and the doctor said that. If Chris is any older, uh, he would have died. Uh, but because of his age, mm. uh, you know, he's able to pull through this. But he said he got a hold of some bunk stuff, you know. And um, and so, being a teenager, my frontal cortex not fully developed. <laughs> you know, I thought to myself, well, I've gotten stuff that 
or I've taken stuff that's not gotten me off before, but nothing has ever done this. So anyways, a, a few months later, uh, I used again, had another heart attack. Uh, this one was less severe, but because of the shame surrounding the first one, what happened was, was that I figured I was going to die that day. And luckily I didn't. Wow. And um, the cardiologist confirmed the second heart attack. And he said, you know, unfortunately, Chris, because of your age, we don't know what kind of damage has been done. And so, um, you just might not wake up one day and that's just the honest truth. Wow. But, but also I had other health problems too, because, mm. you know, uh, digestive problems, you know, I could not eat a salad or an avocado. I could not eat anything with fat in it. You know, I'd be uh, vomiting in the middle of the night or in a fetal position a few hours later after eating it. I had severe sinusitis. So I lived on all kinds of medications and, you know, I had upper GI, lower GI, had scopes going in from all directions, trying to figure out, Yikes. you know, why uh, food was affecting me this way. Mm. And so what I did was, was that I actually uh, realized after the second heart attack that I was going to end up dead in prison or both. So I put myself into Taekwondo to change my path. I started competing right away as soon as I got my yellow belt. <laughs> and by accident... Wait, which one is the yellow belt? It's right after the white belt. Okay, so, <laughs> so second level. So, okay. Yeah, so you have beginner level white belt, then you have yellow belt. And I started competing in full contact right away. And um, uh, one night before a match, I was accidentally kicked in the back and uh, uh, left me with a severe back injury. Doctors wanted to do surgery. They said, Chris, if you move the wrong mm. way, you might not ever have sex again or you not might not ever walk again wow. so it led me to another physician dr nancy bergman and she had a therapist working for her at the time and he was a martial artist and now what i'm like 19 or 20 mm -hmm. somewhere around there mm -hmm. and um he starts talking to me about chi and really the closest thing to chi that i get at that time is cheese it's and cheese whiz because that was my <laughs> favorite that was my favorite snacking food back in the day <laughs> But anyway, cheese it. cheese it. So I had nothing to lose, you know. And back then, this is over 30 years ago, not too many people were talking about Qigong in the United States. So mm. I started taking these classes, and there's only a couple other women in the class. And they're talking about all these experiences that they're having, you know, energy-wise or body sensation. I was not having any of that. I thought I was a chi dud. But you still stuck with it. I stuck with it because, you know, after about six months... But what kept you from month one to six sticking with it? What kept me was, was that I was feeling something. Like, I, I wasn't you feeling... You felt better. I was feeling better. I couldn't quite pinpoint how I was feeling better. Like, mm -hmm. I wasn't... Like, I didn't have, a, like, hot sensations from doing certain meditations or whatever. But I wasn't having any, like, exponential, yeah, yeah, yeah. like... Enlightenment experience. No. Coloration. Or, yeah. or levitation. <laughs> um, Can that but, happen? I don't know. That's a later okay. video. <laughs> So anyway, so what happened was, was that uh, we started, uh, or after about six months, I all of a sudden woke up one day and just had the realization like, oh, when did I stop getting nauseated after eating certain mm. foods? When did I stop living on the Sudafed, the Actifed, the antibiotics? And so I thought to myself, if something could do, if a simple meditation, specific meditation and gentle movement could do this to me, then there must be something to the practice so then that's when I started studying Chinese medicine and dove deeper into Qigong. What about you? What, what got you started? Well for me what's funny is because Chris and I both practice Qigong together husband and wife team but literally like six months before I met Chris I had started studying Qigong at a local junior college. I grew up in Silicon Valley also same as Chris and my parents are from two very culturally different backgrounds so that caused a lot of conflict. They're both very, they're scientists. Both my parents are physicists, very scientific, um, a little energy quantum baby here. And, um, but with all that conflict, I would suppress my emotions. And my mom was pretty hard on me. She would ride me and very, very critical. So then what ended up happening is that I, uh, as a teenager and into my 20s, I developed really bad acne, like systemic acne to the point that it would be like tender to the touch and painful. And then um, it would be like this chicken and egg. So then because my skin was so bad then my mom would make me feel bad about it. And then, you know, taking me to all these doctors trying to figure out the root. And it wasn't until I started studying Qigong that I realized like, oh, wow, that really does bother me. Oh, wow. I've been pressing down my emotions, putting on a happy face, pretending that things are a-okay when in fact I was really struggling and suffering inside. So it was that realization that kind of woke me up. 
And I was actually working for my parents um, from college until you know five or six years later, traveling the world doing high tech sales. And I realized like, mm, I don't really wanna work for the man. So then that's when I started as a Pilates instructor. Then I went into massage therapy, got introduced to Qigong kind of like a roundabout way at the Pilates studio I was working at, instantly got fired one day. For, I was working there for many years, got fired. Then actually what seemed like devastating and a huge obstacle at that time turned out to be a major blessing because that is how my path crossed with Chris. And then that moment, yeah, because we had a mutual client that said, oh, you're studying Qigong. Oh, I know this guy that does Qigong. And oh, by the way, he fixed my shoulder because she had really bad shoulder um, pain. So that was how um, it was like my road to Qigong also led me to my road with my beloved. So, so we intertwined and then I realized like, oh man, I got a lot of emotional baggage that I had been suppressing for many, many years once I acknowledge revealed it must be revealed to be, be healed, healed mm -hmm. revealed it then using these powerful practices to release and come into more full alignment then how's my skin today beautiful no makeup You're glowing yeah <laughs> beautiful and that's and that's the thing that i love is that uh, she could go out of the house with no makeup <laughs> and she's so beautiful Aww. and you know that was the thing when it first met is that she really did have the systemic acne in her her, pan her parents are financially set. You know, they they had the money to pay for, you know, the most expensive doctors, uh, mm. uh, chem chemicals to put on her face in her oh, body. Oh, Accutane. I took Accutane. Which is very dangerous. Twice, yeah. two different batches, years apart. And it wasn't and it wasn't touching it. And then one of the things besides practicing Qigong and giving her treatments was, you know, I was telling her, you know, um, cause, because in your position, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, with her parents, Prisa was okay to be seen but not heard and how many people out there that are watching this right now mm -hmm. have experienced that as kids too that it's okay to be seen but not heard so i started uh you know empowering parisa like no you need to speak up and stand mm -hmm. in your truth and not let them bully you and suppress your voice and also that was the thing too is that once you stopped um allowing them to suppress your voice that also helped with it too so it was yeah so that that's the amazing thing about qigong is that it really empowers you to build your energy because one of the positive virtues you know at least of the lungs anyways is courage and mm. one of the positive virtues of the kidneys is willpower so if your kidney chi is strong then you'll have the willpower and you have the courage in order to address these situations that are sometimes uh difficult to address but yeah i wish we had before pictures because no I'm one sure would believe find, I'm sure no one would find. believe the transformation and the other thing too is that as you come into more full alignment and more balance within your body then not only do you change physically but also your relationships change because uh, Chris and I we've been together 12 years now and um, I could tell you that the beginning of our relationship my relationship with my parents and our relationship now with my parents has changed dramatically we've all come a very long way. A long way. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's work to cool be thing. done, but a very long way. Yes, <laughs> yes. I, I say a long way. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. So, um, okay. anyways, so if you're anyways. if you're just joining us, um, you know, as I was saying from the very beginning, as we opened up here today for this Chi Coaching Week, that you know the leading cause of death and disease is negative emotions and mm -hmm. trauma, and it's not it's not that emotions are bad. It's it's when they're suppressed or not expressed appropriately that it shows up as disease. And we're going to talk about that more in depth later on this week, you know, but I'll give you an example. Like anger gets a bad rap, um, but anger is really there for you to fight for the underdog, for you to get out of a bad situation or, or to make positive change in the world um, or do something creative, uh, being passionate about doing something creative. But if that anger is causing you to drink too much, eat too much, uh, be verbally or physically abusive, have road rage, mm -hmm. or, or maybe you're suppressing it and now you're having symptoms. We're going to talk about this later on that all of a sudden you're showing up with like Lyme disease or fibromyalgia mm -hmm. or colitis mm -hmm. or Crohn's mm -hmm. disease. There's a whole number of diseases when anger is not expressed. All those autoimmune diseases. All those right? inflammatory diseases mm -hmm. um, um, stem from the, this liver imbalance and we'll mm -hmm. go into the reason why later on this week. But really, you know, like I said in the beginning, Thousands of years ago, you paid your doctor in order to uh, help you stay healthy and keep you healthy. Keep you healthy, and you stop paying your doctor. 
once you got sick because they no longer were doing their job, right? So it'd be like a subscription. You pay, you're healthy, you go in, you get your treatments, you're feeling better, and then, oop, you're sick. Stop paying. <laughs> Stop paying. Can you imagine a system like that? Amazing. I wish we could recreate that. But anyways, we can do that with self-empowerment practices like Qigong. Yeah, so the purpose of today's video is to help you reclaim your life, rec reclaim your health, and, mm -hmm. and your happiness and really help you uh, find the, the path and mm -hmm. uh, that you, uh, that we all deserve to be on. You Absolutely. Know, what is that path? Yeah, and because Qigong is one path to that health and happiness, that fulfillment in your life, it is rooted in thousands of years of study. This isn't something that was just developed yesterday or like some people might, they call it alternative medicine, but it's really the original medicine. This has been passed down before even writing exists by mouth, word of mouth, and then finally they started to write things down. The first Chinese medicine book called The Yellow Emperor's Classic of Internal Medicine. So this is a practice that's thousands and thousands of years old. It's actually one of the most widely practiced uh, exercise forms in the world because it's from China and because literally China has the biggest population. So. Yeah, but maybe not here in the United States. Not I, in the United I, States, but, but I'm just Europe. saying worldwide. Yeah. Yeah. In worldwide, Europe and yeah. such, uh, Qigong is practiced quite a bit. And uh, once again, when you're really looking for that fountain of youth, uh, this is one method uh, of self-empowerment that you could take with you anywhere. Yes, and there's, you know, if someone who might say, oh, this is pseudoscience or, oh, I don't believe in that stuff. But there's literally hundreds of studies because we gather and collect and if you're interested in reading some of the research there's studies done by harvard stanford mit all the major university and research institutions have studied the benefits of qigong the benefits of tai chi mindfulness meditation and it's really outstanding there's one study from stanford i believe on um, parkinson's parkinson's disease and but, how yeah. the effects of qigong and tai chi can reverse the Parkinson's um, side effects. So it's really interesting. And this stuff is based on science. Based on science. So, you know, of course, we go down naysayers and say, oh, this is kind of some kind of pseudoscience and such, or this is uh, some kind of weird uh, belief structure. And it's not. What I recommend to my uh, clients and when I'm giving, when I'm giving sp uh, talks to trauma nurses and doctors or, or to the public, um, what I'm talking about is, is that, you know, just try it out. You have nothing to lose to try it out and, and, and apply it and see what, mm -hmm. see what comes up for you. But, you know, ultimately I think that anything that is, that is fake, nature has a way of revealing its weakness. So if it's been around for 5,000 years, mm -hmm. obviously there's something to it. And, um, mm -hmm. it's not some kind of weird belief structure or whatever, mm -hmm. but, um, it is founded in history and, you know, in like, like Priester was saying, now, scientifically, they actually are proving that, well, not, not now, but I mean, actually, uh, Robert um, Kabat-Zinn, right? Yeah, yeah. He started this whole... That mind was like 40 years ago. Yeah, he started this whole mindfulness revolution, mm -hmm. and I believe in University of Massachusetts, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. But anyways, uh, doctors at the time thought that he was crazy, but <laughs> uh, he would do these mindfulness practices that were rooted in Buddhism mm. that uh, he would have his uh, patients do and he documented how these practices actually helped to transform disease. Now the difference with mindfulness and uh, meditations like what he was teaching and Qigong is that Qigong actually has both components. It has the mindfulness aspect which I would consider the yin aspect and then also mm. it has the yang aspect which is a specific guidance or movement uh, for a specific reason. So what you're going to find mm -hmm. uh, this week, and we're going to d jump in here in a few minutes, but or in a few seconds, but what you're going to find is, is that these simple movements, no matter how simplistic they are, they are all meant to do something medicinally inside the body. And in fact, uh, a few of the uh, movements that we're going to be sharing with you this week, actually you could find in my book, Qigong for Self-Refinement, Total Health with the Five Elements. Mm. And uh, speaking about five elements, we're going to jump into that also this week because did you know that each of us is a certain element typology? Ooh. Ooh. You know, I'm a big fan of Ralph Smart. Big, big, big fan of Ralph Smart. Ooh. 
this side, baby. <laughs> Slow motion. Slow this motion, side. this side, baby. Yeah, so you're going to find out uh, just what your element typology is. But anyways. Oh, wait, so real quick about the five element typology. If you don't know what your five element typology is, you can actually go to our website, sheltonchigong.com, and download your free five element questionnaire quiz. So do that today uh, so that you can know your element type for tomorrow's class. For tomorrow's class, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So let's jump in. You ready? Oh, yep. so we're gonna actually do the practice. Yeah. So uh, we're just gonna do a few of the uh, few of the practices and um, just kind of give you a taste if you haven't practiced qigong before. Um, so if you're brand new to, uh, to uh, the practice of qigong, welcome. Once again, qi is the life force energy that emanates through all things. Gong is the skill in order to harness this life force energy. Um, and we have a saying that it's rooted with, uh, there's three schools of Qigong. There's the medical school like acupuncture and Chinese medicine mm -hmm. and Qigong. Uh, there's the martial arts school like Tai Chi, Bagua, Xing Yi, all these internal martial arts. And the spiritual school is no ism necessarily, but it's understanding that you are responsible for taking charge of your life. Mm. And you are responsible for addressing what's going on inside of you instead of projecting it outward and hoping that somebody else will fix it for you. So it's actually taking oh, ownership for yourself. Okay? Taking ownership. And also, um, once you develop like a regular practice, and it doesn't really take that long, 10, 15 minutes a day, you find your own personal alignment, then guess what? Then you have an opportunity to share that mm. information with other people. Mm -hmm. And it's a sharing and a guiding, not necessarily a codependent relationship. We're going to talk a little bit later on about how the Qigong teacher training program can empower you to do that. Yes, because the wisdom that you learn from these practices, and, and hopefully you share this this week with, uh, uh, you like the video and you share this with your friends and your family, colleagues, and, and stay with us for the next five days here and, and continue to watch this video series. The whole idea, once again, is for self-empowerment because once you figure out how to remedy your own situation, whether it's health, mental, emotional mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. it, uh, situation, you know, then I believe then what's supposed to happen is, is that once you learn, you gain that wisdom, you then are to share that with other people and not take it to the mm. grave with you. So I believe that God, you know, some God is not a vengeful God at all, um, mm -hmm. but sometimes the universe shows us things or we have trouble in our life and, and it's not a, any kind of punishment or anything. It's like, wake up, knock, knock it on your back door. Let's wake up. When you wake up and figure out how to remedy the situation, and you share that with other people so then it helps to enlighten them and then they, they can share that. And that's where the Qigong teacher training actually mm -hmm. comes in. So that's why don't we so go ahead and cool. start off okay. with a few Qigong practices. We'll start with the, um, the three pillars. The three pillars. The first is a physical posture called Wuji posture. So you're going to bring your feet about hips width apart, point the toes forward, slightly bend the knees, tuck the tailbone, and tuck the chin, pushing up on the crown of the head. So just take a moment and feel into that physical posture called the Wuji posture, and Wuji translates to nothingness or emptiness. So doing your best to create that elongation of the spine as you ground down through the feet. The second pillar is the breath. So take a moment and tune into the breath. Long, steady, even and deep, inhaling and exhaling through the nose, setting an intention what would you like to receive from our time together? And the third pillar is the mind focus or the mind intent. Allowing for the imagination to lead the mind and the mind to lead the smooth flow of the chi. Let's flutter the eyes open with a nice big smile. There's that smile. And we're going to pull down heavens three times. So reach out wide to the side. And then exhale and feel into the front of the body from the forehead down to the feet. Do that again twice more. Gather and connect from the space around you. And exhale, this time feeling into the back of the body from your head down to your heels. Oh, one more time. Inhale. And exhale. Feel the very center core. All right, and then from here, what's going to happen is we're going to go through three chi clearing exercises. Very simple to do. The first one is tossing the stone. And all we're going to do is we're going to bring the arms up about shoulder height as we inhale. And then shifting over to our left, we're going to exhale and release. Inhale, center, exhale and release. 
Now, as I do this practice, I want to make this into a mindfulness practice. So it's not like I'm uh, just waving my arms. I want to use my mind intent because like what Parisa said is that the second regulation or the third regulation is mind intent, allowing for the imagination to lead the mind and the mind to lead the smooth flow of the chi. So I'm going to focus a soft focus gaze on the end, tips of my fingers and allow for any negative emotions or feelings or thoughts to roll off the hands like a dark cloud flowing several feet away from the body and deep into the ground. And I'm going to allow for any tension in the shoulder, any tightness in the shoulder to release as well. So if I have any neck pain, shoulder tightness, I'm just gonna allow for that to release. And maybe what you can't really see is that I'm using my legs as a pump. Okay, so you see Priest as she steps back here, she's using her legs as a pump. We are turning at the waist here, but I'm not having my legs just locked and fixated. I'm using gently unlocking those knees, allowing for the chi and the blood flow. And by the way, if you have a hard time conceiving what chi is or energy is, is uh, think of it in terms of your blood. Your blood is a form of energy, okay? And the great thing about qigong as well too, as we toss away any negative emotions, is that you can do it from a seated position. Uh, Parisa and I are clinical directors for the Special Olympics, thanks to Maria Shriver. We're part of an international program called um, Healthy Athletes, Strong Minds. And we actually, for California, we teach these practices to deal mainly with the emotional health of people. But we have paraplegics uh, in the Special Olympics that are able to do this. And even if you can't move your arms, for example, believe it or not, just watching somebody do these practices and then using your mind as though your body can move like this mm. will also create a release for you. Okay, so I'm going to slow it down here. Coming back to the middle. I'm Finish off by pulling down the heavens one time. Inhale. Connecting with that life force, your higher self, source, whatever feels comfortable or good for you. All right. Now, bouncing practice. We're going to bring our feet a bit narrow. Close the eyelids down. Focusing inward. Start to lightly bounce. Bounce with me. And then allow for this gentle bouncing to go to any places in the body, any places where you might be storing any tension or tightness, any aches or pains, any frustrations or irritations. Just so imagine this gentle bouncing going to that spot in the body or the mind and alleviating, breaking free, allowing for your energy, your bodily fluid, your blood, your chi, your life force to flow smoothly and effortlessly like a flowing stream of water. Noticing the flowing stream of thought as we quiet the mind and tune in to the bottom of the feet. Take a moment and feel the bottom of your feet, how they connect into the earth. Feeling grateful to be alive. Moving up the feet into the ankles, any tension or tightness in the ankles dissipates and leaves the body now. As we walk up the legs into the knees, feeling your knees at ease. Moving up the thighs into the hips and the groin, feeling that connection between the tip of the tailbone and the tip of the pubic bone. Let's walk up into the low back and low belly. Feel your mid back and chest. Take a moment and tune into that space between the shoulder blades opposite the heart, also called the Shen Dao point. Moving up into the shoulders and neck, relaxing the muscles around the voice box for clear and effective communication. Feeling into your face, let the muscles of the face relax a little bit more. Feeling your ears and noticing the sounds, the sound of my voice, as well as any sounds in the space around you. The sound of your breath. Then bringing your attention to the crown of the head, the very tippy top of the head, 
Come several feet above the body and visualize a top-down view. Visualize yourself from the top down. Pause with the bouncing. Feel into that. Ooh, nice little chi buzz there. Flutter the eyes open. Smile. Inhale. Grab from the earth below. You lift the heels up. Rise on the tippy toes. Breathe in. Exhale. And let go. Ooh, that was a good one. Twice more. Deep breath. Inhale. Connecting earth to sky. Rise up and release. Uh, one more time, inhale, feel that connection, and let go. Ooh, pull down heavens, three times, inhale. And exhale. Cooling the body, calming the mind, inhaling up. And exhale, settling in a little bit more. One more time, inhale up. And exhale just like that all right so the next cleansing exercise is actually one of my favorite exercises to do is called shaking the tree or shake it off like the Taylor Swift song shake uh, it off. we're one of the only <laughs> animals or mammals on land that does not shake it off when something happens you know if you look at your dog you know your dog whether that dog is happy to see you or that dog is angry he or she will shake it off um, two ducks get into a fight that fight will last a few seconds the ducks <clears throat> will swim away and the first thing they do is they violently flap their wings. The reason why is because their consciousness, or they're conscious enough to know, <clears throat> excuse me, that they have this angst or vibration inside the body, right? So um, if they held on to the anger, just like us humans do, they'd swim around the pond waiting for Bob <laughs> to come around to pop them in the beak. And um, you know, so, uh, but all animals <laughs> shake it off. That was a serious punch there. <laughs> <laughs> but all animals, you know, they, they shake it off. Uh, us, when somebody makes us angry, what do we do? We hold on to it. Well, some of us might say something, but we feel that angst. That angst actually creates inflammation and disease. All right, so oh, this is, snap. so the next time that somebody makes you angry, you see something on TV or on social media that disrupts you, instead of <laughs> suppressing that and feeling that angst inside your body, release it. So we're gonna this start off with- what you do. Yeah, start with the fingers, inhale all the way up, and <sighs> Exhaling all the way down. All right, let's inhale again all the way up. And recently seen. Good job. All right, let's do a couple more. Inhale. And exhale. And last one, inhaling. And. All right, and let's pull it back one time. Inhale. And then exhaling. <laughs> I know I'm in trouble when he starts shaking in front of me. <laughs> so yes, next time your spouse or significant <laughs> other upsets you, shake it off. I recommend going into another room though, not do it in front of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, so here's another very powerful and potent exercise that we can do, which is called the heart healing sound. So the heart is the emperor of the body, takes the brunt of all the emotions and then disperses it outwards. So take a moment, we can even place our hands on our heart, your big beautiful heart. And the sound is ha, H-A, like you're laughing, ha, 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 ha. But we're gonna make it into more of a chant. And what we're gonna do is chant out loud together three times. Then we're going to do the sound, the ha sound three times in a whisper, a whisper. And then <clears throat> we're gonna make the sound three times silently in the mind's ear. Okay, so first preparing the breath. Are you okay, gonna say something? Just one thing real quick. Um, now this is a mindfulness practice, so we're not just making the sound. So what I'd like for you to do, as mm -hmm. I'd like for you is the <clears> heart <throat> is the emperor, empress of the body. We're gonna talk about this more tomorrow, but it dictates how much an emotion is going to be expressed or suppressed. So I want you to focus on something present or past has created some kind of pain for you. Trauma, pain, I want you to feel it, who's involved, what's involved. And then as you inhale, imagine a pink cloud filling up into the heart, and then as you exhale, we're gonna make that ha sound, okay? Mm -hmm. And then as we do that, we're gonna imagine that circumstance leaving like a dark cloud, going several feet away from the body and deep into the ground. All right, prepare the breath. Adding the sound.
And as you continue to make the sound underneath your breath, imagine this circumstance leaving like a dark cloud going several feet away from the body and deep into the ground. As we create the space in the heart where this trauma once was or past pain, we allow for the pink cloud to fill up into that space, nurturing the heart, repairing the heart. Letting go of the pain and the trauma and allowing for the virtues that were learned from the circumstances of the wisdom gained. And allow for love now to fill up into your heart as that trauma leaves. Making the sound three times silently in the mind's ear. So doing the sound quietly to yourself. Still focusing on that circumstance, whether it's past or present, who's involved, what's involved. Are there any sounds, smells, or even inside, outside? Visualize everything, and as you make the sound silently to yourself of ha, allowing that to release like a dark cloud. As you breathe out, going several feet away from the body, deep into the ground, allowing for the positive virtue of love to come in. And then from there, coming back to the present, feel the love. Oof. Pulling down the heavens one time, inhale. It's powerful. And exhale. Okay. For the white pearl meditation, you're gonna take one hand over the other, just below the belly button here. And one more time, closing the eyelids down and focusing inwards. Inhale, exhale, feel the belly expand, front, back, left, and right. And as you exhale, feel yourself relaxing a little bit more, a little bit deeper. Then imagine a white mystical pearl which sits behind the hands in front of the spine, connected with the breath. As you inhale, the pearl expands, growing brighter and lighter. And then as you exhale, the energy from the pearl dissipates, wraps around the waist and pours into the kidneys on the low back. Imagine your kidneys like two cups. Inhale, expand the pearl, expand the breath, filling up your whole body, front, back, left, right, above and beneath you. And as you exhale, pour that positive life force energy into the kidneys revitalizing and rejuvenating your life force energy. This time as you inhale, expand the pearl, expand the breath, filling up your body, and this time the space around you, all corners of the room that you're in. And as you exhale, imagine the wall, floor, and ceiling drawing into your lower dantian, your sea of chi. And last time here, as we inhale, expanding the pearl, expanding the breath, filling up your body, the space around you, and this time traveling as far and wide as the mind will go, sending out love and light, kindness, compassion, gratitude as you exhale, feeling better and better. Keeping the eyes closed. If you're wearing glasses, take your glasses off for a brief moment. Eyelids stay closed, and then we're going to rub the palms of the hands together. Rub, 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 rub. Place the warm hands over the eye sockets. Breathe in that warmth from the palms of the hands through the orifices of the eyes and feel that energy, the breath travel in and through the body and down, 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 deep into the ground. Then open the eyes from behind the hands. Boop. Remove the hands from in front of the face. Wow, can you see more clearly? Mm -hmm. Feeling better than before. Let's pull down heavens three times, inhaling up and exhale. Well, and since today is uh, celebrating Martin Luther King, there's a great quote that I found this morning where he says, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Mm -hmm. Only love can do that. Mm. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Did I say mm. light the first time? No. Oh, darkness. Only light can drive out darkness and love can drive out hate. Beautiful. Love. Beautiful. Okay. 
Okay. Ooh, how so are you I, feeling? I'm feeling great. How are you feeling? Yeah. How are so you feeling? Leave your comments below, please. And you know, let us know. We let want us to know, know how you feel. Yeah. Let us know how you're feeling. And this is just a taste as we get into uh, tomorrow's video. And please watch this video completely uh, from start to end because it's going to roll into tomorrow's video as we dive deeper into uh, the causes of disease and inflammation and, mm -hmm. and mental, mm -hmm. emotional. You know, and that's the thing too. We just lost, um, I just lost, uh, my best friend here in Los Angeles, uh, Eric, the trainer, mm. uh, on Thanksgiving. And, uh, so mental emotional health, you know, where more and more people are being affected by it. I mean, it's been something throughout history that we don't talk about. And tomorrow we're going to look at how our emotions actually show up as disease as well. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And one important note to make is that you don't have to believe in this stuff in order for it to work. So no. a lot of people say, well, I don't believe in it, so it's not going to work for me. But especially as a practitioner, if you're a, a clinician and you see clients or patients, as long as you hold that belief that the person can get better, then guess what? That person will get better. Yeah, that person will mm -hmm, get better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what can we expect for tomorrow? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, tomorrow we're going to dive deeper into the five elements. Okay. Dive deeper into the five elements, discuss more on how our emotions play a role in sickness, illness, and disease. So it's going to be very, very interesting. Um, and also we're going to unpack that five element personality quiz. So if you don't know your personality typology, are you going to tell us what you are? Um, I'm a wood type, a wood earth type. Okay. Mm -hmm. What about me? Oh, definitely a fire type. Fire. Yeah. Okay. So, and, and this is different than an enneagram. So if you've taken an enneagram before that tells your personality, I believe that enneagrams are very accurate. This is not only going to tell us our personality, but what we're going to dive in deeper this week is that uh, it's going to tell us potential diseases when we deviate from our personality typology. What does that mean? When we deviate from standing in our truth or, or what our power is, what, you know, what, cause each of the five elements has a certain gift or certain gifts, I should say. And we all possess all the gifts mm. to some level, but a certain, each typology really possesses those. And when you stand in those, um, that will promote health. If you deviate from those, then that will deviate disease. And I'll talk more about that as, as a wood type. Would that would that look like for a wood wood person? And what does that mean? What does wood, fire, earth, metal, and water actually really mean? Well, and also speaking of gifts, I just wanted to say that this man is very gifted mm -hmm. in terms of understanding how the body functions and then being able to explain it to people in a way that makes sense because a lot of it could be kind of like out there, or not just uh, tangible, but Chris has a way, number one, of explaining it so it makes sense. And number two, of using these hands <laughs> to help facilitate healing transformation for himself, for his family, for friends, and for those um, in our community at large. So it's pretty cool. So um, if you like today's video, Go ahead and leave a comment. Let us know how your life could change by incorporating these practices in, in your life. Please feel free to share and to like. Um, we always appreciate your uh, enthusiasm. Yes, and <laughs> also the other thing too is we'd like to know and learn more about you. So please put in the comments below a little bit about yourself. What do you have going on for mm. you? Um, because even if we can't, uh, uh, address it maybe today we could address it tomorrow yeah because to we will go through and look at all the comments we will and look respond at it yeah and... so let us know about you what are you looking for what are some of the deficiencies in your life what do you want mm -hmm. help in understanding as far as your health or your emotional wellness goes or if you have some kind of chronic pain or disease you know please type that in please let us know where you're from we'd like to hear where people are, are tuning in from that's all always fun and, and exciting because we have a chi club that's every monday tuesday wednesday thursday um, which is, uh, uh, we have people from around the world. Around so, the world. From yeah, Saudi Arabia, Arabia to, to South Carolina. To South Carolina. <laughs> yeah. yeah it seriously, it? from around the world. And it's fun it's to get to see cool. where people are from. But again, th uh, these practices are rooted in the foundations of classical Chinese medicine. Mm. And uh, they're thousands of years old. Um, I was able to transform myself as a result and still continue to transform myself. <laughs> it's not like I've gotten the golden ticket that says that, that I've got it all figured out because I don't. Yeah. But uh, when, when life shows up and those uh, uh, circumstances mm. show up in my life, at least I have these practices um, in order to help me process through them all. 
and also we're able to now um, embrace challenge and recognize that challenge is actually an opportunity for us to learn and to grow. Yes. And when the emotions get stuck, now we have tools to literally shake it off head to toe. Yeah. So how do you spell love? How do we oh, spell love? Oh, here's something fun that we always do. All right, how do we spell love? A little sign language. L-O-V-E. -E. Love. And we, and we will see you later. later. <laughs> All right, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for joining us once again. I'm Chris Shelton, and that's my lovely wife, Parisa Shelton, is just signing off here. Please join us. Share this video. Like it. Share, 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 uh, because we're here to help you and help to empower everybody and, let, and, let, and give them the information necessary to understand their body and how their body functions. Okay, so we will, we'll see you guys tomorrow, 10 a.m. Uh,